So I've got a graphic that I've created in Photoshop. This will be my apps icon. I need to get it into my app. So first I need to get it out of Photoshop as a format that will work in my app. I've been working so far in the PSD format. This is the Photoshop document format. This is fully editable. If I save and close this file and go back home and I have Photoshop, I can open this file and further have all my layers intact and all my special settings. But I need to convert this to a PNG format or ping format in order for it to be compatible on Android or uh, iPhone and such. So the way we do that is let's go up to the, let's say your, your project looks good, you can always refine it. Let's say it looks good. Just go do a regular file save. Just save your work as it is at this point. And then go up to File, Menu, Export, um, Save for Web Legacy. There's different ways to export it. This is one way. So go to File, Export, Save for Web. This will be this will work well for our for our app. Save for Web. Get this screen with a lot of customization that you can do. But the easiest thing is at the top right you have presets. We're going to use the one here at the bottom, Ping 24. That's what the handout says. That's what Android and iPhone and Windows Phone need. They need a high-quality Ping graphic because we have Pings, GIFs, JPEGs, other formats. Ping is, the, is often the, the best one to use to retain a lot of quality. And depending how you design your graphic, it could also be compressed pretty well. Where Ping doesn't work so well is photographic images, but I'm not going to create really like a photorealistic icon for my, for my app. You could. Um, you would still use ping. And notice transparency is on here. In my case, the little bit of the edge around my square that um, I didn't draw on will be transparent, so I'll be able to see behind the scenes. If I didn't have transparency on, I would have a white square right there which might look weird on my device. I've got this cool little shape, a little drop shadow, and then white, and then behind it will be the user's Android wallpaper. So the quick way is if you select the preset of Ping24, it's the right format, and it's got transparency. You don't need to change any of these other previews and color tables and anything like that, but notice from this screen we've also got the image size selector. My handout says we need four sizes, 96, 72, 48, and 36. So I'm starting with a really large high-quality graphic, 512. It's five times larger than I need. But I need that for future um, quality and dimensions eventually when Android 7 reaches more people and more people have you know a 5 inch device or 6 inch then there will be a larger sizes that we need. So I'm saying here we want to save it with a particular name at a particular size in a particular folder. I'll show you a shortcut here. First change your image size width of 96 and then press um, tab. That'll just uh, show you that it shrunk it down to 96 tab so we've got ping 24 transparency 96 squared save and the shortcut here is we're gonna replace the existing icons that are already in our app that way we'll automatically name it what we need and we don't have to bother changing any code so my app is on my flash drive over on my flash drive, in my app folder. Remember, I, I said we're going to be using um, my SDCE with the date. Hopefully, you, like you set this up an hour ago. You've got a copy of the project inside of the res folder, icons folder, Android folder. Click once on the icon 96 that will automatically borrow the correct name that we need. We're saving it in the right folder that we need. Click Save. It'll complain that you're about to erase an existing file. Yes, we want that. We want to replace the old Cordova icon. 
with our cool new icon that we made with our own bare hands. So I'm going to replace that one. And just to show you, in that folder, my SDCE, res, icons, Android, I've replaced one of them. When I compile my project, they react again with Taco Build, and the new icons will take effect. But I have three more that I need to, to replace, so I'll show this process again. It took me back here, back to my original 512 pixel sized one. The process again is File, Menu, Export, Save for Web, It should have remembered ping 24. If it didn't, change your preset to ping 24. And then we need to change the size. Image size width, 72 tab. Shrunk it down. That's 14% of the original size of our graphic. Save icon. should have hopefully remembered you in the proper folder, my Android folder. I want to replace the icon 72. So you can click on it. You can actually double click, that's even faster. But if you click then save, or if you double click, that will then replace, or that will ask you to replace the existing one, which you do want to. So now I've got those two sizes, and then you should see what to do next. Going to export again to the 48 pixel size to replace. Save again to replace the 36 pixel sized one. I'll let you try those two on your own. Try to replace those two 36 and 48 pixel sized ones. the original Cordova icons with your new icons. And once we've done this, then we'll run our project so that it recompiles it with the new icons, and then we'll see what it looks like on the actual device, real or virtual. So I'll give you a moment to make sure we've all replaced those icons. Okay, so I've got my icons replaced. I want to run this on a real or virtual device. Remember the quick way to get taco, that is the command prompt, in the right place quickly is from Windows Explorer. You can hold shift and then right click your taco project. I'm holding shift on the keyboard, right click the folder and select open command window here. It'll quickly open up the command prompt in the right folder if it's not there already. Taco, we got a real device plugged in, so taco run android space dash dash device. It'll take a little moment. So I want to uh, I want to compile it and deploy it to my real device and uh, I want to see the icon. The icon will be found after you exit the app, it'll be found on in the app screen where all the icons, where all the apps are installed. That's where you'll see this icon. I'm going to wait for mine to deploy. Same thing with the virtual device. If you deploy this to a virtual device, you then want to press the home button 
of the virtual device to go over to the app screen. I think it's called the app drawer. And all your apps are stored there. You'll see the icon for this project. If you're having trouble uh, installing this new version of your app onto the onto your real device, you might want to uninstall the old version of the of the app, and then try to reinstall or uh, compile this new version. Okay, so my, my Cordova app it still says Cordova, yes. But if I go to the home screen, then I go to my apps, I see my SDCE, my little S Palatino font icon thing that I designed right there. So let's pause here. Did everyone get there? app to show the new icon. Anyone need a little help? You also see that icon if, uh, if you open up your app switcher, whatever icon yours is, mine is the little square icon. If I press that to show my recently used apps, my recently used my SDC app shows up there and the icon shows up there as well. That's why we're loading it with four different versions, four different sizes of the icon because that looks like it's probably like the 36 pixel sized one in the app switcher when I switch between apps and then I've got the larger one probably you know, the 48 pixel sized one or something for the actual app screen. And I think you see that icon in other spots too. So if I decide, yes. All the icons, like where? All right, so this is going to be a similar process for the splash screen. Do you notice the first time you load your app, it shows the Cordova icon on a gray background for a moment. Then that goes away, and then it shows the main Cordova temporary Cordova connected to device. Well, there was, there's a splash screen. There's, an, there's a, some kind of graphic or branding that can display first before my app loads up. The reason I want that is because there's stuff happening behind the scenes that I don't want the user to see until the app is ready. So the app is initializing, let's have it display some interesting graphic. That's the splash screen. My handout says you can add a unique splash screen that displays as your app loads in the following way. Again, with 24-bit ping files, without transparency, we're going to create them in those following dimensions. Now, no transparency here because the splash screen will appear and any transparency will be invisible and therefore you'll be able to see through the splash screen to the app which will look very weird. So we have these dimensions. We'll start with the largest dimension right here and then we're gonna design something and then save it and replace existing graphics. Then we're gonna edit our code in a couple of spots. We'll get to that in a moment. But I want to design some of these graphics first. So make a note here, 320 by 426, 320 by 470, 480 by 640, and 720 by 960. Now all of these dimensions that I have in this handout are 
vertical graphics. We've always got width and height, basically. 320 wide, 426 tall. 720 wide, 960 tall. So these are tall graphics. Because our app, as in another lesson, we locked the app vertically. We want our app to always be vertical. If our app, we want horizontal or vertical or whatever, um, I didn't say anything here about creating horizontal oriented graphics, but you easily could just by switching those dimensions. 960 by 720, then you've got a wide graphic. Ours is vertical portrait, so we're only going to deal with the portrait uh, graphics. In Photoshop here, here's a trick. I want to start with whatever I started to design here as an icon and use that as the basis to create my splash screen. I want to do a regular old save, first of all, to save my project at this point. Then we'll go up to Image Menu, Duplicate. This will take our existing graphic with all of its layers and everything. Duplicate it. Image Menu Duplicate. With a new name of <laughs> Splash-720. Uh, Picks. This is our base work in progress graphic for the splash screen, for all those four splash screens, four or five splash screens that I need, based on my little icon. Well, this icon, uh, notice I've got a new tab now, my splash tab or project, and then my icon. This one has already been saved as a PSD file, work in progress. This one has not. It's just floating around in memory. If the power goes out, you lost it. So make sure you've duplicated it. I've got a duplicate. I'm then going to File, Save As. I'm going to save it on my flash drive. I'm calling it Splash 720px PSD format not PNG, ping, PSD, the work in progress file. So we'll save the splash 720, maximize compatibility, sure. And this icon for this graphic was originally designed at 512 by 512. Well, I need 720 by 960. So let's go up to the image menu. Canvas size, change the units to pixels, I need 720 by 960. This will add extra space to my existing graphic, it'll add more to the canvas, it'll add more to the background of the graphic, 720 by 960. I'm also going to zoom out. Uh, zoom out. The fastest way is double click on the hand at the bottom left. So that's to zoom out. Double click that to zoom out completely. Double click the magnifying glass to zoom in. Zoom out. That's a quick way. You double click the hand. So now I've got that whole size dimension. I've got more space. What I could do is resize this graphic to fill more of the space. Or, because I've got more space, I could go over and get the text tool, for example, and write, you know, the full name of my app, my SDCE. Engage in a little bit of design. Maybe I'll move my icon up a little bit with the Move tool. I have to select more than one layer. So that means I'm going to click one layer, then Control click another layer. And I can move both at once. I know these are separate elements, so if I try to move one, only one moves. If I want to move more than one element, I may have to control, hold Control in the keyboard and click more than one layer to select more than one layer to manipulate.
If you have a larger size to work with, the splash screen, that's the size of the screen, the user's screen. So take a moment to do a little design there and then we'll do export without transparency. I'll, I'll show you how. And then we'll uh, save it into our project. Let's say I've got something that I like here. I'll, I'll save, just a plain save. I need to go back to export, file, export, save for web, turn off transparency. Turn off transparency, you're going to get a white background, or if you want a different color, instead of that color there, <coughs> other colors. So remember to turn off transparency. You can choose a different background color. It's there under matte. Or simply click on that little box of color and choose a different color. So my image size, I have the right dimensions already, 720 by 960. I don't need to change anything under image size. So I'll save. And then on my folder here, I have to back up one level, another level. I have to back up to the screens folder of my project. I was in the icons folder. I need to go to the screens folder, Android folder, and I've got the landscape and portrait versions of the high DPI, LDPI, medium, and extra high. Extra high XHDPI portrait is the one we're, we're just making right now. Next comes HDPI, which is the 480 version. Then below that we've got medium DPI, the 320, 470. And then LDPI is the 320 by 426. We'll get to those in a moment. I'm going to replace screen X HDPI portrait. Let it replace, of course, and then if I back up into the folder to see the result, Res, screens, Android. I've replaced one of them so far. I'm going to do next the HDPI version. Back into Photoshop, file, export, save for web. I remembered my background color and all of that. What I need to do now is change my image size. And on my notes here I've got 480 
by 640. So that one changed. I type 480, I press tab, then it shows 480 by 640. I'll save that. Yeah, I'm replacing now HDPI portrait. So screen HDPI portrait. I've replaced that one, and then I'll need to do something similar for the LDPI and MDPI, but with a little tweak. I'll do the export. Save. Next, I need uh, 320. 320 by 470. Well, here, if I change it to 320 and then change it to 470, will that change my width again back to 353? If I put that to 320 again, it changes that. These are locked in proportion. I need to break the proportion here. This was a proportion that was locked together. So I need to turn off this lock. Click to toggle retaining original proportions. If I turn that off, see how the lock is broken, then I'll be able to do 320 by 470 and it'll keep the sizes that I want. So turn off your lock if they are both changing. save and that one is the MDPI portrait. And then for the LDPI, same sort of process, file save for web. This one's also 320, but um, I know it's 426. I doubt there'll be much of a problem at, with one pixel difference, but just to be safe, I'll also change that to 426. You have to turn the lock off. Save that, and I'm replacing the LDPI portrait. So in your folder you should have new versions. Don't worry about the the uh, horizontal ones, we're, we're never going to access them. Our config XML file says that our app is locked to portrait orientation. What you could do is delete them since we're not going to use them. That'll free up a few kilobytes in this case. You can leave them as is. They won't... Uh, it's only 79 kilobytes in total. But if you uh, want to delete those, you could. I'll leave them alone. Let's make sure we've all got our new graphics here and then we'll get back to the handout to see what what is next so if you need any help saving these to the right dimensions call me over and then we'll change that in the code okay simply putting the graphics here works somewhat what I've got 
in my handout is then I have that we're going to edit the config file. So in the folder, I'll back up to the root level of the project. You want to right click to edit config XML. Edit in Notepad++, of course. And we're going to add a new line of code. This is something that's universal to all the platforms, so we're not going to put it inside of a section of platform. I'm going to add it in line 21 before any of the specific platforms. We're going to add a new preference with a name and a value. So line 21. I'm going to start my code here. Preference name equals something, value equals something. That's the standard syntax. I'm adding a new preference here uh, to display the splash screen for a certain amount of time. The name is Splash Screen Delay, capital S on all of those, Splash Screen Delay. It has to be in this way, this is the way the specification is set up, camel caps is a starting capital letter, unlike we usually do. We're going to say, how long will we display the splash screen? So we're going to put here 10 thousand. This is in milliseconds. So 1,000 milliseconds equals one regular second. Millisecond, thousand seconds. I'm saying here, let's display the splash screen for 10 seconds. Now, that is a long time. But the reason I want to do this is, I want to give the internal Cordova code to do its thing, to set itself up, while the splash screen is visible. And then, when Cordova is ready, hide the splash screen. We're done looking at it. We'll do that second part in a moment. So, just to see if this works, I'm going to save this and I'm going to run my code. I want to see that new splash screen. I'm going to run it in my device. Make sure you've spelled this properly. I should have an app that loads up with a splash screen that lasts for 10 seconds, which is way too long, but then we'll fine-tune that in a moment. I want to see if this part works, because there could have been some errors, of course. So I'm going to have an app loading up, and then I'm going to count it. Because my app loading up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, 10 seconds, way too long, but I'm seeing it lasts for 10 seconds. If I want to see that one more time, I have to force quit the app. I'm going to exit and then go to my app switcher and then force quit the app to get it out of memory. And then I'm going to load the app again with my cool new icon, load it up, just to see it again. There it is. Okay. It's 10 seconds long. It works. Splash screen delay lasts 10 seconds. Now, you may say, well, that's way too long. I'm going to put 2,000. It'll last for two seconds. That's definitely faster. But the problem could be that your app is not ready to run in two seconds. Maybe on your device, which is newer, it runs in two seconds. But maybe someone that downloaded this project on an older version of Android with older hardware and older RAM and all of that needs three seconds for Cordova to fully load up. And then the splash screen has gone away already in the second second. So the way we do this is we will let Cordova tell the system, we're done loading Cordova, we're ready to go, cut it in two seconds, or one second, or five seconds, or whatever. So 10 seconds is probably more than enough time I could to be safe really, second, really safe at 30 seconds. And we know that at a certain time Cordova will hide it. 
which is the rest of my handout here. Save and run. Notice you get a splash screen that lasts for 10 seconds, which is unrealistic. You will add code so the splash screen is removed once the Cordova APIs load. So once we have uh, the on device ready, once that event of on device ready, once that fires, hide the splash screen. Just like we've got sort of like on click, you know, we can click something to do something. We have the the event of device ready. Cordova is ready to go. So we have navigator dot splash screen dot hide method. So in, in our JS file, in index.js, we will add the following in the onDeviceReady function. So I'm going to go back to my folder in the WW folder, in the scripts folder, edit the index.js file. We've got, uh, I haven't fully explained every single thing here already, we're, we're getting to that, but the important thing is there's going to be a device ready event. At some point the Cordova code is ready to be used. Once that event occurs, the on device ready function is invoked, and then all of our Cordova code should be inside of on device ready. I'm going to say first line 7, the first line inside of the on device ready. Navigator object, navigator.splash screen property dot hide method. We're saying when Cordova is ready, wherever that may be, in one second up to 10 seconds hide the splash screen currently visible. Confirm the code. Navigator dot splash screen, it's all lowercase, dot hide, parentheses. Save that. Run it in your device or emulator. I'm going to count it myself also. You saw previously it was taking 10 whole seconds. Here we go. So it's loading up here. One, two. Didn't get to two. So my app loaded up in about one second. It's a very simple app at this moment. But it's the same code you saw a moment ago. It was going to go for 10 seconds. This time it only lasted one second because the Cordova API, the framework, is ready. It's not doing that in anything interesting. When we get it more complex, it may then go up to two seconds. The splash screen went away. I'm going to force quit and launch it again. And that's all the time it needed on this device. On another device, it may take longer, and that's okay. The splash screen is going to last as long as it needs to. So I'm going to run it again. One, two, two seconds, less than two seconds. So that's the point of this. Um, the actual what you need to change in your code or in the app is relatively easy. There's two folders, a folder of app icon and a folder of splash screens. Then a little bit of one-time code editing here, and it all fully works. The hard part is designing those graphics. I don't have any gra artistic ability, perhaps. I'm more of a programmer. Well, I showed various examples using icons and shapes and styles and all of that in emoji. And what we did in the project was edit these assets. We focused on Android for the moment because that's the only thing I can test it on. But if I'm going to make this an iOS app eventually, I have all of these icons I need to create as well.
over here, these are named here as well, like 72. I already have the 72 pixel sized one, so that one's done. But then I have to make uh, the, the app icon small. I don't know what that size is, but uh, Windows should tell you if you click icon small for iOS is 29 pixels. Because iOS had regular resolution and high resolution retina displays, there are these versions that are 2x, double the size, which is double the size. So icon small at 2x is 58 pixels. So we're not going to go into these and create all of these. It's straightforward what you need to do, I hope. I'm seeing the 76 double size icon template. So in Photoshop, I will design that graphic, export it, and make sure it's 152 by 152 drop it in this folder, and then I've got my iOS icons when I eventually compile for iOS. And then if I'm going to do a Windows app, there's a whole bunch of other ones here, but I can see the dimensions and create the right graphic sizes. And if I'm doing Windows Phone, I've got a couple sizes there. All of those together define my app icons for all the big platforms. Yes. Are these app files uh, for iPhones or for uh, MacBooks? These here should be for i i iPhones, iPads, and iPod touches. Um, not for the MacBooks yet because it's under the iOS. On Macs, you know, regular Macs, they run Mac OS, not iOS. So we would need to install the you know Taco platform add. Mac OS, and then we would have the Mac OS folder where we then define icons for that platform. <coughs> so oh, these are the icons, and I would need to do something similar for splash screens. I have Android, iOS, Windows, and Windows Phone 8 splash screens. So I would go if I had the if I, if I was going to target that platform eventually again. Here, here's the here's the iPad landscape sized splash screen. It's 1024 by 768. The retina one is double that. So that's 2048 by 1536. And then I've got these different ones for iPhones. So iPhones, so check out how big these are. Portraits. So the iPhone screen and all of that. So I need to create these different sizes, upscaling, downscaling, and such. Uh, I had said previously that I had said previously that if you started off with a small version of a graphic and restars, resized it to the large version, I uh, would lose quality. The caveat is depending on the kind of graphic you make. If we made our icon based on text layers and shape layers, these actually will still retain quality if I resize them larger. The reason that it would not work is if I had created a graphic with something like the brush tool. This is a different kind of graphic. These are raster graphics. These, if I take them from small to big, will lose quality. But if you stick with shapes and text, those are all what are known as vector graphics. They're mathematically defined, and therefore we can resize them easily without losing quality. If you have a picture um, of, a, of a stone column with the letter S that I took with my digital camera, and I use that as my icon, that will lose quality if I resize it because that is a raster graphic. It's made out of dots. Well, uh, while our uh, shapes here are made out of uh, mathematical points. So we'll take one more break, and uh, hopefully you've got that running either on a real or virtual device. It's 8.05. We'll take a 10-minute break to 8.15.